Hello, Asheville. I am your host, Crystal Salinas McKinnon, and you are listening to WPVM 103.7 on your dial and at WPVMFM.org globally. This is a WPVM special report regarding an incident recently with Representative Madison Cawthorn that has made national news and gone viral. I am joined today by NC11 Democratic candidate Jay Carey, who was a witness. So on Monday, September 13th, Cawthorn was continuing his tour of school board meetings in the district, um, North Carolina's 11th, to speak out against mask mandates in schools. In this instance, he was at the Henderson County School Board meeting, which was on the matter of the mask mandate. While Cawthorn was at the podium speaking, Democratic candidate Jay Carey, who is coincidentally running for his seat, and is a fellow resident of Henderson County and actually has children in schools of Henderson County, was seated behind him and spotted what he believes to be a knife sheathed under Cawthorn's wheelchair in the back. Um, It is a misdemeanor to bring a weapon onto educational property. Thus far, despite what appears to be photographic evidence, news outlets are all reporting this with terms like allegedly, um, because neither the, the sheriff's department nor Cawthorn's camp will confirm or deny whether or not he was in possession of that weapon or any weapon. Uh, according to an MSN article, when asked about the allegations after speaking at the school board meeting, um, Cawthorn said, I don't know anything about that. I'll have to look into it, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, Spokesperson for Henderson County Public Schools said that it was the district that notified Henderson County Sheriff's Office, um, stating we are committed to the safety of our staff, students, and members of the public schools and on our property, and will continue to fully cooperate with law enforcement. Now, the Sheriff's Office has said that they declined to follow through with this. And again, they will neither confirm nor deny whether or not Cawthorn had the weapon. However, they have said that the building has now been clearly marked as an educational facility, which prohibits weapons on the property at all times. And they also comment that Cawthorn has been notified that he may not bring weapons onto the property. Uh, One could speculate, possibly, that these remarks, coupled with a lack of denial on the part of Cawthorn, suggests that it is, in fact, true. Cawthorn was also seen that same day with a knife visibly in his pocket, so it's not exactly far-fetched that he also had one behind his chair. And I believe that the knife in his pocket is also visible in the picture that Jay took from behind him that day. So Jay, thank you for joining me to give us your first hand account of what you saw. Sure. So why don't you just tell us, walk us through what you saw? Well, you know, we got there around four o'clock, got a seat up front because I wanted to be able to have easy access to the podium to speak in defense of the, in support of the uh, mask mandates that the school district had put in. Seeing as I have children that go to the schools there, and a two-year-old at home. I saw him come up to the podium. Uh, If you watch a video of him speaking, I'm directly behind him. You can actually see a look on my eyes come across when I realize. I just kind of go, oh, I look down, and I see it, and I pull my my phone out. And uh, I I, I didn't notice or I didn't pay attention to his pocket. I was looking at the back of his wheelchair. And you can clearly see that there is a knife there. People have tried to say that it was a part of his wheelchair. It's a uh, hitch, I guess. I've never seen anybody with a trailer hitch, you know, connected to their wheelchair, but eh, there's a first for everything. Um, I'm trying well, not to laugh at that. <laughs> uh, people are making excuses for him, you know, and, and that's just this the way it goes. Um, you know, I did over 20 years in the military. Uh, attention to detail. You know, understanding what's in and around my surroundings was my bread and butter. It kept me alive. Uh, I don't know how many times I was able to avoid IEDs just by being able to spot them early. And they don't always look like bombs. They look like plates. They look like soda bottles. They look like all kinds of different things. 
So it was pretty easy for me to spot this knife, honestly, and I knew what it was right away. I've seen him playing with it in video, uh, flipping it around, uh, being, you know, some people have, 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 you know, called him a mall ninja. That's the kind of knife that they like, the mall ninjas, and I call him a PX ranger. PX rangers, like, in the military, make fun of people who get all this extra gear and all this stuff <laughs> that they get that they don't need. Uh, it just does no, serves no purpose but makes them look cool, and that's people... Funny enough, in the military, it's usually people that never go out uh, out the gate or on the ground. Um, the ones that want to look all cool. And that's what he reminds me of as a PX Ranger. Uh, it was easy to spot. It was a no-brainer. People have, uh, there's, you know, it's, like you said, it's gone viral. And there are very few people, I've surprised, very, very few people have come out to his defense. Try to make it something else. And I got my first piece of hate mail, which was amazingly awesome. <laughs> I feel like I've arrived now that I'm getting hate mail. Um, and even ex-military have come out to defend him and saying that I'm picking on him and uh, people, you know, accidents happen and why well, it's a big deal. And I said, well, the big deal is it was on school property. It's clearly marked school property. Anybody, any adult with any sense about themselves will know that weapons are not allowed on school property, nor have they been in quite some time. School property is not just the building, it's the grounds also. So when I approached the deputy uh, to let him know that Madison Cawthorn had a knife under his uh, that was attached to his wheelchair and that he was still on school property, even though he wasn't in the building, I was told, don't worry about it. If he tries to come in, I'll take it off him or I'll let him know. But, you know, basically he was blown off. And then you've seen in the re you know, what's happened as a result of the sheriff, who, might I add, is also a Republican, was... Uh, notified about this and his many excuses uh, about why they're not going to charge Madison Cawthorn with anything. And um, I don't know about you, but I've seen a big trend, especially in the Republican Party, of not taking accountability, not accepting uh, responsibility for your actions. And funny enough, if you know that night, if he just came out on social media and said, "Yep, I had a knife. I didn't realize it was there." Because honestly, if you carry knives enough, you forget you even had on you, it becomes a party. All right. I, you know, I, I had a little keychain knife that I don't even carry anymore because I went into a, to a sheriff's or the, into the courthouse and I was like, they're like, Hey, you got it. And I was like, Oh, let me go take it out. And I just don't have it on me anymore. Cause I know I'll forget again. And that's not what we want to do. And this was months ago. So I don't want anybody trying to say, Oh, you're carrying a knife. I was not. <laughs> um, but if he just came out and said, yep, I, I carried one. I, I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had it on me. I've got so many other things going on, which I would imagine a representative would. Uh, I accept any responsibility. I accept my responsibility and I accept any repercussions because of what I did. And I will do better in the next, in the future. I bet all this stuff would have just died, would have just died off. He never addressed it. Doesn't accept responsibility, just like every single fail other thing he's done in his life, apparently. And uh, it's, it's done nothing but... Uh, get me things like this where I can get to be on the news because of his inability to accept responsibility. Well, and we also know this is not the first time that he has brought a weapon into an inappropriate space. Um, in February, I believe, he was caught trying to bring a Glock 9mm in a carry-on onto an airplane, which he says was a mis he did acknowledge and said was a mistake. Um, but even if it is a mistake, it's quite irresponsible, some might say, to not know where your Glock is. Um, so renowned political scientist from Western Carolina University here, Chris Cooper, commented that this might actually be advantageous to Cawthorn politically since he seems to run on the basis that all news is good news. And also, um, you know, I'd further speculate that his base perhaps may see such an act as one of admirable defiance. What do you think? I think that the, the time of all news is good news or all publicity is good publicity is passing us by, especially to people that are psychophants of Donald Trump. As we've seen in the past few months, Donald Trump's endorsed candidates fail. Uh, that negative, that message of fear and uh, lying has been working against them. I'm sorry, I just noticed a huge spider outside my window. <laughs> uh, just webbing his way down. Um, 
No, I don't agree that all news, all, all, all publicity is good publicity. Within his base, maybe, but his base is not the voting. the The amount of votes that uh, that Cawthorn got in the last election is not representative of his base. That's representative of the Republican Party, uh, but not his base. His base is not that many people. Then they're shrinking because they're seeing the reality of a of a immature person. Okay, he's not a child, he's 25 years old, but he's immature because he's incapable of taking responsibility for his actions. He is fomenting violence. He is pushing lies after telling the truth. He'll turn around and say, oh, I didn't say that. Like, you know, Donald Trump liked to say, even though there's video proof of it. So I think he's driving away a lot of those good conservative Republicans who believe in the Republican Party, but not what the Republican Party is becoming. So... I, I, I don't think this is going to benefit him. I think that if anything, it's opening people's eyes. And like I said, I think, honestly, I think I've gotten maybe five replies, five or six replies in a couple emails that are negative to that, uh, to the story that I posted. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have responded to one of uh, uh, Representative Cawthorn's Instagrams and probably got a hundred people snapping back at me. And this is a couple of months ago. Okay, so they're seeing the truth. I really believe that people are coming to their, you know, coming to their senses, seeing the truth. And the reality is, is that uh, Mr. Cawthorn does nothing for this district. Uh, he doesn't even um, come close to representing this district. They see that he stays. He even went to a, a, a school board that was outside of our district to speak, uh, you know, to, to, to talk about masks. He doesn't even have children that are affected by this. You know, and, and he's not representational of, of the district as a whole. This is a good, proud, hardworking, middle-class district. And he is a spoiled, rich, lying, fear-mongering, immature person. And they're like, you know, it's time for a change. And I see that coming. I don't see him benefiting from this. I haven't seen any positive spin on this other than that sky wire live, whatever that guy is. The guy that sky wore this... Line. No, uh, whatever. He doesn't want to say my name. I ain't saying his. Okay. He wants to talk about me, but he doesn't want to say my name. Uh, except for him. And he seems to be building his whole, uh, his whole uh, business on Madison Cawthorn. So you know he doesn't want to see him you know, lose the election. And that's fine. But you know, there's been multiple reports by multiple news agencies about this. And wondering, what, where's the responsibility? Where's the accountability? Right. And uh, it's not there. And this is, do you think this is helping him? I mean, do, does that sheriff think that he's helping Madison Cawthorn by not holding him responsible? Does he think that he's helping our county by not holding him responsible and making excuses for a grown man? Re regardless of the fact that he's our representative or whatever, he's a grown man that needs to be held responsible for his actions. Twice now, three times, because don't forget, he talked about having a gun on the floor of Congress, which is illegal. That's true. It's a federal offense. Gun on a trying to take a gun on a plane, federal offense. And he's got no accountability. And how are we helping? I mean, honestly, maybe this 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 guy needs to be held accountable by somebody to teach him a lesson and to grow up. So yeah, I mean, well, one can only speculate on why he has gotten away with this similar offense um, several times and, and why the sheriff has declined to, part, to do anything about it when there is uh, photographic evidence. So, all right, Jay, well, thank you so uh, not, much. Again, not, only photo not only photographic evidence, but a sheriff's deputy made aware of it at the time that he had it. Mm -hmm. and they're in action. Now, when, when do we hold them responsible? Also, I, I think mean, this that's is... a fair question, for sure. So thank you so much, uh, Jay, who is a Democratic congressional candidate for NC's 11th, uh, Jay Carey, for joining me today to share with us what he saw firsthand. Um, there's nothing like a firsthand account. <laughs> we will continue following this story and others regarding North Carolina's 11th as they unfold, so stay tuned. Once again, my name is Crystal Salinas-McKinnon, and this has been a WPVM Special Report.